Good day, ladies. It's so good to be with you. The school we visited has really been a blessing and it's so good to be with you again today. So I think we should start with one or two or more songs just on the love of God. One of my great passions is to sing the Word of God. And because we talked about how important and how easy it is to teach through music because it lays new neuron parts in your brain and the child can never forget that song that he has learned from, from you. Even though he wants to, he cannot forget the song. He will forget the teachings, he will forget a lot of things. He will not forget your love, but he will definitely not forget your songs. Even if he lies in the gutters, he will still remember that song. So I'm going to teach you a Bible verse that's very easy. It's 1 John 4, I think it's 16 that says, a lot of words so I wanted to include all the other verses as well so you repeat after me let us love one another for God is love and we love him because he first loved us there is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. And if I fear, I am not perfect in love. Oh, it begins with, oh, look, look. Let us love one another, for God is love. And we love Him because He first loved us. No fear in love, perfect love cause out fear. And if I still fear, I have not, I'm not perfect in love. So I just did a nice rap and he seems to can beatbox and what to call. Okay, I'm gonna quickly see if I can remember in English the Ten Commandments. Are you ready? What was rule number one? Love. You have to watch me now because you will never forget it again. Rule number one says. There's only one God. Hold your finger. One God only. Rule number two. You shall have no other gods. They shall not bow before this God. So there's your two fingers. There's only one God. Rule number two. Do not bow before other gods. Rule number three. With your mouth that looks like lips. Do not use the Lord's name in vain. So three is for with your mouth, you must not, and it looks like your lips, do not use the Lord's name in vain. Rule number four, you make a cushion with your hand and you say, you must rest on the seventh day. There's your cushion. Okay. Hello. You must rest on the seventh day. Rule number five. Give me a high five. Sure. You should honor your mother and father. If you honor them, high five. If you don't honor them, 
Low five. Okay. You should honor your mom. Rule five. You should honor your mom and dad. Rule six. Okay, I take this and I take this. This is my knife and this is my heart. You shall not kill anyone. Okay, five plus one is six. You shall not kill anyone. Rule number seven. This is mother and father. And this is all the temptations that will come in between them. You shall not commit adultery. So mother and father must be together, they must not be separated. So if other men or women come in between, you commit adultery. Rule number eight. In some countries they cut off your fingers when you steal and they put you in jail. Rule number eight. You shall not steal. Rule number nine. Five is not four and four is not five. So how many cookies did you eat? <laughs> you must not lie. Okay. You shall not tell any lie. Rule number 10. With your two hands, don't grab and don't be greedy. And do not want what other people have. So this is the song. Ten commandments, ten commandments, ten good rules God has given us. Ten commandments, ten commandments, ten commandments that will bring you life. Rule one, there is only one true God. Rule two, do not bow before any other God. Rule three, you shall not. Um, rule three, do not use the Lord's name in vain. Rule four, you should rest on the seventh day. Rule five, you should honor your mum and dad. Rule six, you shall not kill anyone. Rule seven, you shall not commit adultery. Rule eight, you shall not steal. Rule nine, you shall not lie. And rule 10, do not want what other people have. 10 commandments, 10 commandments, 10 commandments that has given us. 10 commandments, 10 commandments, 10 good rules that will bring you life. So the whole thing is you can make your own songs and a little later we will talk about the musical principles and how you can use those to create your own songs. Okay, we're going to start with number eight. And I want to know from you in which way do you present your music. She said she's got a backtrack. Do you play the backtrack or do you play the whole song? The whole song. The whole song, yeah. So we just sing along with the other songs. Is there any, benef any benefit or any problems with that? Uh, it works for you. It works yeah. Do you show the words some way? Not necessary. Yeah, you is to organize your axiom. What I find, and I'm not against it at all, what I find is when you teach a new song, the children might not look at you, rather look at the words, and they never memorize the songs, like the older people. So when I sing in the church, they say, where's the words? I say, well, you've sung this for 60 years now. Don't you even know the words of Amazing Grace? Why? Because we got spoiled with that. But if I say, God is love, whoever lives in love, I can start slow, and I can go faster, I can repeat as many times or do it as short as possible. You do not have to have an instrument. This is a luxury. If you have a CD player or a boombox or whatever, it is a luxury and it's nice for the children. What I also found, it is okay just to have fun. But if the music, you will see that all my songs have been recorded in a very expensive, very professional way. You can look at all of them. I hardly ever play a song that was recorded because it's easier to connect with the people without a guitar. The guitar is also a barrier. It's easier to connect with you. Let's sing this song. Jesus loves me this. There's nothing else. But when it's a group and the kinders is onrustig, then it helps sometimes to have a nice beat. When the children learn a new song, 
So I just want to go. La, da, 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 da. That's really what the boys do. You know what I'm talking about. So sometimes they want to do the moves, but they don't really want to learn the song. So that helps when you use actions as well. So they do this after me. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God lives in him. So I did it wrong now. I first should say the words, say after me, so I'm just with another number where I teach them a song. So I say, say after me, God is love. God is love. Whoever lives in love. Whoever lives in love. Lives in God. Lives in God. And God lives in him. And God lives in him. So now there's no doubt about the words. Now I can add a melody. So the melody say, God is love. God is love. Whoever lives in love. Whoever lives in love. Lives in God. Lives in God. And God lives in him. And God lives in him. So that's an easy way to teach the children without any instrument. You don't, but then you have to be sure that you have rhythm and you have pitch. You have to have those two. So you ask your best friend that's good with music, do I have rhythm? She says no, then you need a young person to stand next to you. Even if you have pitch, if you don't have rhythm, the children will not be able to follow you. So I don't say, God is love, whoever lives in Love lives in God and God. You, you have to chung 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 chung. One, two, three, four. So you put the rhythm a little bit in your body, a little bit in your voice, and you sing out loud, and you over articulate your words. Okay, so that's how you actually teach a song. I know I'm with another number. So the ideal is no music. But a person that can sing and can pitch to teach little children the song. Mont will cake. So that's a visual learning, that's experiential learning when you add the move. So then when I know they know the songs a little, I add a little rhythm. But before they clap, because they're gonna clap immediately. So no, 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 don't clap. Let's try and remember the words. Where is God? God, how do I show love? I know they want to show this, but I work with audiences of 500,000, so they can't see this. So I don't show, God is love, whoever loves, oh, that's so boring. So you have to animate, and you have to over-articulate, and you have to over-accentuate, so this is not love. This is love. <laughs> What did I use? My whole body. My face shows love. So just try and show love. love. Not from you. Love is God. So God is not here. God is not here. God is there. So I'm old. I can still stretch my hands. God. You can look up if you want to. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God lives in him. So if you cannot do three things together, you have to learn to do it. You have to sing and remember, it's two things already. You have to show the moves and you have to act with your body. So if you have to practice in front of the mirror, if you don't say the words, if you just say, hmm, mm hmm, then we'll never learn the song. Even if the CD plays the song, you have to sing with all your heart. You can even sing louder. If you are the music or the choir leader, it means that your voice must be a little bit above the others. Okay. So that's just a very easy way to teach the children. But the primary thing is 
you have to know that song of Bahamut. So one of the ways you sing, the children watch, they learn, they sing along with you. We will talk a, a little later about the continuity. So you don't stop and say, oh yes, what was the other song again? You've lost them. Two seconds too long is two seconds is too long. So at the end of your first song, you already know what your next song is going to be. So even while you sing, you act. You do everything, you do it in the spirit, and then you still know, either with a small note or just because you've done it so many times, what would be a good song to follow up. Sometimes I skip the last note of the previous song. And when they say, la, 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 and when they sing, la, I start already with a new song. With the guitar, it's easier because I can quickly catch it up. So continuity when I sing the song is very important. So how do I learn? How do I teach? I learn the song first. I work out the moves before the time. I practice with a friend or in front of the mirror. Sometimes we think, think it looks nice. So, this little light, now, this little light goes down in the mirror, or this little light. You decide which moves you want to do, which looks best, and then when you do the actions of the song, when they know the words, when they know the words and the melody, that's two things, two different things, when you think they know the melody in a wrong way, you have to continue with that portion of melody over until you know, say, shh, just listen here. Ak in my house, on Saldi here, Dean. So the last one. We will serve the Lord. Isn't it? La 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 la. The other was la 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 la. The last one. We will serve. So you must make sure they know the melody. So maybe they sang too loud and they were too excited and they haven't memorized the melody yet. So they must know the words, easy songs, they must know the melody a little bit, and then you can start with the moves. The moves help them to move their body, but it must be applicable. For the bigger children, they don't want to show moves. So you should work out a nice like a dance for them, which is fine. If they want to do it outside and work out the dance, it's also nice to call them back and say, have you worked out a dance on this? But I have certain symbols I use when I show moves for songs. So king can be this, or king can be this, whatever you love is always this for me, but this is my heart. So I do one hand to hands. You can do whatever you want to, and then I do a lot of left, right, left, right. It is not necessary that you always use children's songs. But I felt that many times when they use only Khrut means Likis, they either don't understand it or it's not a singable tune. So we'll get to that sort of stuff. So this is a spring castel. Ja hier nie spring castel vir Khrut mense nie. Ja hier ook. Voor die fertiliteit wat kinders van spring castel hou, maak ons van die spring castel Likis ook. Goed wat makkelijk is, baie goed wat jumpy is, Goed wat per tijd niks zeggend is. I mean, Father Abraham. So we're going to talk just now about how we're going to put the songs in different categories. The Bible divides the song into what we call teaching songs. In 2 Kings 3 verse 15, are you with me? Page 4. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Him was the prophet. And he said, Thus says the Lord, make the valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. That is prophetic music. Sometimes people sing prophecies. So that's in another category. It mostly comes natural. So if a child in your class starts singing, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, Many times it's a prophetic song. Sometimes they sing over the nation. Sometimes they sing something that's truth. Ephesians 5 is 19, very important. Um, speaking to one another, just count how many different things. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, 
Sing and make melody. That's new songs. So only in Ephesians chapter 5 we get songs, hymns, spiritual songs and melodies. And then uh, in Colossians 3 which is not there. Colossians 3 says teaching songs, admonishing songs. Let the word of God dwell rich in your heart. So how do we teach them and admonish them? We teach them the word of God through songs. So where in the Bible do we get teaching word songs? In Colossians 3. It says, let the word of God dwell richly in your heart. Teach and admonish one another. Then with the psalms, the hymns and the spiritual songs. So we should talk to one another actually in song. It should come natural. And then again he says, make melody in your heart and sing with thanksgiving in your heart. So what I do when I get all my songs, I can divide them into different categories. It can be in your book or not, just right there where it says teaching songs. This is a biblical division of songs. Teaching songs, admonishing songs, Moses wrote a song that was history, it was a story. Bible verse songs, praise songs, worship songs. So what actually, how do I explain it? If my grandchild will brag to his friend about what Oma has bought him for Christmas, then it's praise. If he sits on my lap and he strokes my cheek and he says, Oma, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. So that's the adoration part. That's the looking up. And many times that's in the first person. God, you are. And many times praise is, My God is a big, big God and a great big God is He. So it's, can, some can be faster, some can be slower, but that's not the only way to divide praise and worship and you know because of the tabernacle we will do the tabernacle later today because of the tabernacle the gate was open the middle gate was open even the veil in front was open so we can enter into the holy of holies without any resistance if we follow the path we will do definitely see how we can teach and train a child to enter into God's presence so do you have in your list story songs if you don't you must make them many times I make songs up if I don't want to tell a story if the children are very restless I make a story song on the spot Noah had an ark, the ark was big. He had to call the animals to buy to serve. Now, Twickeners, you two are donkeys, get into the ark. You just draw a line on the mat. This is the ark. And they say, God is big, he will save the world. It will rain and all will die. Just sing whatever the story is and get like a refrain in that story we did that in russia i can't tell you we just we crawled on the floor in laughter because the adults to whom i gave the lesson never saw something and they were just so good they had to think out they had to take a friend and think out the one was a mosquito, the one was a bee, the one was a this. So I said, you get a friend, and it was like 50 or 60 people. We had so much fun. We had the ark, we had Noah, and we had just this one refrain that they translated. I can't remember, it's on a video somewhere, so I can still recall it, or just play it back. Uh, so there were some things that just worked perfectly. Uh, Moses and Eroesia, who con Moses or Eroesia, come. Who con Moses or did we see come? How did Moses cross the Red Sea? Can you tell me how he got him? Did he swim? No, no. Did he sail? No, no. Did he fly? No, 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 no. Then God sent a great big wind and it parted the sea and there the people walked through. So the kinders were the Hove. The kinders were the Israelites and they were the Egyptian, they become the Egyptians 
and the great thing they love. The, be the boys love to be the Egyptians. <laughs> and the boy lo boys love to be the sea. Because what happens? Maar to the Egypt naar het Jurbel loop, het die see weer toe gegaan. Yeah! And then they bully one another, pa, 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 and all in the plonk in the shoppy floor. So they love to that. We do the walls of Jericho. Once upon a time there was a great big city. It was called Jericho. It had a great wall, big wall, and no one could get inside that beautiful town. But God said to Joshua, and then they walked around the great big city. This was on day one. They walked. So, yeah, Mark, you make your own songs. You think if you're afraid to do it on the spot, you just try to plan it. But the melody changes. You just have a rhythm. So we are with songs. What I do, I have teaching songs. I have scripture songs. So when I have my list of songs, for example, I have theme songs. So I have teaching songs on love. I have worship songs on love. So if the song has the word of love or love of God or about all this, I can also search them with a search engine on my computer. But now my search engine is mostly in my brain, so I just know these five or six love songs, and I ask the children, and as I sing, the another, another song comes up. So give me a, f a few love songs. God is love. Okay, there you've got that one. It's love. It's love. The love of Jesus. It's love. It's love. It's love that makes some more. Oh, that's more worship. How I love Jesus. So you can collect some themes. So if you, it does not necessarily have to fit the theme of the uh, Bible story. But it helps as an introduction. And it helps if your Bible verse that you use for that day is a song. Because I will never forget it. If it's not a song, make it a rap. Just do me that favor. Whatever you want the children to remember, they have to play it out in a drama, they have to sing it out, or they have to talk it out in a rap. Then they will never forget. But if you just tell them the story or read them the story, they will definitely not remember that. Because God has given us this gift of uh, rhythm. So spiritual songs and free, free worship... Uh, John 4 says, God's, Jesus says to that woman at the well, uh, the time has come, 23, 24, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. So they, we use music as an evangelism tool for those who don't know Jesus yet. They can sing and they can remember. We use music as a discipleship tool. After they received Jesus, they can learn word, scripture, principles, values. And then we use it. We use music and worship to lead them into the presence of Christ. So even though it seems like it's a big difference between just singing songs and going into worship, it's really your spiritual child who understands the Holy Spirit and who's got Jesus dwelling in his heart that can more easily be led into prophetic worship and free worship. We even talk about soaking where they lie on the mat. They just experience the presence of God. We just play music. You hardly have to sing if you don't want to. So children are many times naughty. If the children are not too small, just try it for once, just for 10 minutes. If it doesn't work, you just leave it. If I fall asleep, it's also all right. What a way to fall asleep. Yes. So the, the word shachar that was after tzamar actually means to bow down in worship. It actually means to fall, pros is the word prostrate? To umplat for you, to fall flat. Yeah, so that's also a specific way of worship. It's to lie flat on your tummy. 
and to worship God. The other one was Shabbat, is just to dance a victory song. And then the shofar is just to make a very loud piercing sound, which is actually an announcement. So it's also actually more a sound than necessary to praise God. They announced war, they, they called the people together. So many times we also use songs just to gather the children. It's not, it's a double motive, but it works. <laughs> and at the half of the first song, they are attentive and they listen and they partake. Okay, when I look for a song, number eight, page five, I select an easy song after I put it in different categories. This is quite important. So don't get your songs just messed up. Name them with A, B, C, D, E. A means worship, uh, B means praise. Da -da. Then you can give three or four different categories for each song. And then if you play an instrument, you can even write the key of the song in which you're going to sing it next to it. You can see, the sound so song works nice in C, D, or E. Then, one day you teach someone music and you can only play in A, you just select all your A songs. So, it is important that you know where your songs are and easily reach them. If you sing a lot, this is your hard drive and your soft drive and your CD and your computer because God will just bring songs to your mind and they will sort of supernaturally link to one another. Um, David, uh, King David says, in the night, God gives me songs in the night. So many times I woke up, Ami woke up the other day with a nice rap song in her heart, and that was three o'clock in the morning. Those are the songs that definitely come from God. So if you get up with a song, you take your phone, if you're married, you have to go to the bathroom, unfortunately, or else you wake your husband, or to the stoop as soft as you can, and you just um, record that song, even if it's with a hoarse voice. You just sing. There was one song that I recorded ages ago. Um, it was really like in five years ago, and then three years ago I wrote, wrote a program on identity. And for the you of identity was you are unique and my scripture was Psalm 139 no one looks like me I was secretly woven uh, by God and he knows all my days that specific verse and I knew I had a song so I prayed I didn't get another song so God said to me I gave you a song so I went through my phone and I scrolled chuk, 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 and I found it and unfortunately I even heard the water tapping in the background <laughs> that's not a very good testimony but anyway so i remember that i was in the bathroom at three o'clock in the morning i got this song and this is what it sounded like i am fearfully and wonderfully made i am fearfully and wonderfully made before the world began god had a perfect plan the plan to make me as I am and my soul knows it very well and my soul knows it very well how precious are your thoughts more than I can tell but my soul knows it very well so I didn't have that emotion three o'clock in the morning but when I re-listened to the song, I knew, wow, God gave this to me. So do not despise the day of small beginnings. The guy with the name Chris Tomlin, he wrote a very simple song. Now we're already with making songs. The song has got, I think, five words. How great is our God? Oh dear, that's actually a very simple song. I wanted to say stupid, but that would be an <laughs> If I wrote, I thought, no, oh no. The guy who wrote, um, bless the Lord, oh my soul, he didn't want to produce the song. He said, it's too common. I promise you, Matt Redman, he said, I'm not going to produce that song. And his producer said to me, you should produce a song. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. 
Oh, my... If you've got a song like this, that's a children's song. Because it sticks. It's easy to remember, it's easy to learn. So I select an easy song. I looked, number eight, at the age of the child, the culture of the child, the language of the child, the level of difficulty, the range of the song. Does it go very high, very low? Don't give it to grade eight boys, because they can only sing five notes uh, when they uh, stem at gebrek. Then the application, is it real or abstract? We'll talk about that. The type of the song. Is it a worship song, a praise song, the theme of the lesson, and then the guidance of the spirits? Then you select the song, and then you start to teach that song. So, children under the age of 12, maybe sooner, I don't know, find it hard to think realistic. So you have to explain, if you say, you must give your heart to Jesus, they will really think Someone's going to cut me open, they're going to take my heart, I can't give my heart, I'm going to die. So you must, I know that children have the Holy Spirit, and maybe if they have the Spirit, they can sort of, in a spiritual way, understand spiritual concepts better. So don't keep away the word from them, even if the word is allegorically. And all the parables were allegories, it means it was a story that actually meant something else. So I don't keep it away from them. But I actually tell two different stories. And God can link it in their brain, or you can link whenever they are big enough. I will say, milk can help you to grow. It's good for your teeth, and for your nails, and for your bones, and you'll become a strong man. Leave it. Because that's what 2 Peter says. Now I say, if I read my Bible every day, I will become so strong in my heart. I will have so much love for Jesus. But it's difficult to say, as the milk helps you to grow, in the same way the Word will make you strong. I do the two. Most of them do connect it in some, in some way. But God, God used pictures so many times in the Bible that we cannot admit them. He used, he had a symbol for the fig, he had a symbol for the crown, he had a symbol for the olive, he had a symbol for the wheat, he had a symbol for a snake, he had a symbol for uh, um, Syria, what do you call that? Dough. So he used symbols all the time, so we can use symbols all the time when we do this. But be careful uh, that the children do understand the words, especially abstract words. So let me give a, uh, an example. Um, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Now that was the Afrikaans version. Okay, this one. Jesus breaks every fetter. was a very old song. And children know what the very fetter what what the fetter was. Then they translated it into the gospel hymns many years ago. Now I'm giving away my age. Jesus break alle bande. Jesus break alle bande. And then this boy said, when this dad had a pop field, he said that must be Jesus. <laughs> It's Jesus. He comes as a thief in the night, the Bible says. So who stole my bicycle? It must be Jesus. The Bible says he comes as a thief in the night. So sometimes you have to a little bit more explain. We sang a song that the children loved. Ancient of days, and they sang. Ancient of days. I said to the whole group of children, including teen angels, you tell me what is ancient of days, and not one child could tell me. So can you tell me what's ancient of days? Jesus is called in Daniel. God is called in Daniel. The ancient of days. So he's older than the oldest that ever lived. Because he lived from everlasting to everlasting. So he is the ancient of days. Giving an, an authority as an authority figure. But if we don't explain that to the children. They don't understand. Okay, now we've already... Done. I just spring of picky food. So you have to put your songs in categories. You have to prepare. Ask the Holy Spirit. How do you 
work through a year, can I quickly ask a question? Do you have a curriculum that you work right through the year? Do you write your own curriculum? Who writes their own curriculum? Just hands up. Okay. How do you know what to write? That's good. I just plan and then make an arrangement in a month what we are going to do in four weeks. Okay, for that four weeks. And the next four weeks do not have to follow on that necessarily? Uh, it's okay, you can't do it wrong. I'm just asking. Um, Renee is our leader. Yes. So what she does is she chooses a theme. So for instance, if it's um, February, it's love. Okay, so it's thematic, so thematical. Uh, I love it. Yes, and like if it's Easter, it's about the death of and okay. So that's how we do it. Okay. There are two main ways to do it. The one is to take the Bible, to take the Bible, and historically teach the children from Genesis right through to the end of New, New, the New Testament, but preferably chronological. So the Bible is not chronological in the books. So you have to find out chronological which ones to use. I know that there are many people who are specialized in that and sometimes they try to put the whole Bible in one year or in two years and after that two years you think you know everything and then you still sit you don't know what to do. I truly believe you have to combine both, that's just my personal belief. I know that there are guys, what uh, do Joseph um, an American. Yeah. I find that some of the American stuff don't work for the African context. Contents. Yeah, context. So, um, but they are guys who specialize in a one year, a two year, a three year, a four year, or a five year, which is good. Although it has been originally the parents' responsibility, it's actually the father's responsibility. Where do I read that? Ephesians 6. Mm -hmm. Fathers, do not tease your children, but teach them into the ways of God. So it's the father resp father's responsibility, and the fathers don't do it. So the best way is to equip the parents and give the parents the material to work with their kids. But I don't think all parents do it. So we come in on the side and we say, okay, if the parents don't do it, at least we are evangelists, we have a heart for children, we're going to teach the children. You can ask the Holy Spirit, but you can also write, as she said, different things. And then there are amazing series in the Bible that naturally comes to the front. They are like the armor of God. You can do six or twelve or eighteen lessons on that. How many weeks in a year? 15? 52. 52. How many weeks in Sunday school? Every church is different. How many weeks in Sunday school approximately? Or Bible Children's Church? Approximately 38? 40? 40 at the most. 44? Some of the churches only have 38. Some of them are sitting in Fear Some of them only have 32 weeks. But if you have a book with 32 themes and you have seen, you repeat one or two of those lessons, or you just combine the last four lessons, or just have a singing day, or just have a fun day, or just have a Bible day, or a story day, that's okay. There was a lady in one of the churches in Pretoria and she realized that the children don't read their Bible. She felt that the children's Bible doesn't count, and we know that many of the children's Bibles are very flock. They only have 20 stories, which is a bit smaller than the real Bible. And she asked the grade 3 to three, 4, 5, 6, 3 to 6 children to bring their Bibles. But it must be the black Bible, and it must be a specific translation. They must buy one, and they can take them, and they must make a promise to read every night before they go to bed and to read every morning when they get up, even if it's only one verse. The parents were angry 
Because when they went on holiday, they were busy, busy with their bride, and the child would come with the Bible, Daddy, we're going to read one or two verses before we go to bed. May I be excused, please, or will you read it to me? But that brought a new custom in the homes, and for, I think, about two or three terms, they didn't do any program. They read a piece from Genesis, for example, a piece from Deuteronomy, a piece from Psalms, a piece from the New Testament. Maybe they work through the whole book of John. So you can do sort of Bible study with children, read it through to them, teach them how to discover on the different levels, the natural, the spiritual, the allegorical, and the revelation. That's where the word Pardesh comes from. It was like a jewel kiss that you open. It's like this chest that you open. And the wonderful thing is you first have to teach them to use the Bible. Oh, yeah. Look where's Genesis. So they know, have to know the Bible book names. They have to know from Genesis to Revelation. They have to know where in the Bible is the middle. We did as children Swartgevaag. Did you ever do Swartgevaag? We had our Bibles, our big black Bibles. And they said, Swarden is scary because this is my Bible. Swarden is scary. Swarite, and we had a competition. Who, and we didn't have the finger marks, those, those were old Bibles. Suk for my Obatia in Versiege, begin. I mean, the children didn't know where Obatia was, so they had to look. So the children who know where Obadiah was, they had to, they find, ah, they got all the sweets, they got all the prizes, and then the girls win, and then the boys win, and in the end, it wasn't important at that stage what the Bible verse said. It was training them to use the weapon. Yes. So it's like, you know where the house is, you have to find the number, then you have to find the street, then you have to find the Voorstadt, then you have to find the town. So go to the Old or New Testament, find the right book, and there are so many ways to explain to them the Gospels, the um, prophets, the uh, <laughs> the epistles, um, and then the beautiful poetic and um, song books. So actually, Psalms was uh, the book of Psalms had been sung. They didn't write sheet music or score music. Uh, sheet and score is another word for staff notation. Staff notation. So they didn't write a score for those music. How did they know how to sing it then? The alphabet in Hebrew had each a note value. Yes. At each a frequency. Wow. So they could sing as they read the Psalms. That's how beautiful the Psalms were written in Hebrew. So as they follow the Psalms, they could know. That's what I read. I cannot confirm that it's 100% right, but that's what I learned. And if you add those frequencies, then the word Yahweh, and I don't want to go Hebrew and I don't want to go Jewish because people can just go overboard with it. But the word Yod, Yod Hei um, which is the, the name of the holy name of God, um, is actually sung in A minor. And you know that the minor songs are the sadder songs, and they're actually the Hebrew songs. They can sound sad, but they can also sound happy. Okay, so when you teach a child a song, I have written it. I'm just going to read it quickly through number nine. So you've selected your songs, um, and you've selected your themes, uh, what you're going to do. And if you have, like, for a theme on this Fruit of the Spirit, Fruit of the Spirit is a nice series. Um, the parables, there are 40 parables. The miracles of Jesus, 40. Does it sound like a year program to you? There you have it. For a year you do miracles and for a year you do parables. Then you do the Holy Spirit for a whole year. Who's the Holy Spirit? What does He change in me? How can I get the Holy Spirit? How do I bear the fruit of the Spirit? Ten lessons. How do I get the gifts of the Spirit? Ten lessons. How does the Spirit send me out? It's actually more than a year. The Spirit is my helper, the character of the Holy Spirit. So you can do a whole year only on the Holy Spirit. I have written a book called Sampiuna Campiuna Mushroom Champions. 
it's got like three years, five years programs in it that you can use. Verse upon verse upon verse, upon picture upon picture upon picture. It's supposed to be a book on prayer, but it turned out to be just a hunt laying for many people. We will pack that out after lunch, and you can have a look at some of the manuals. We've got a manual on identity, manual on who is God, manual on uh, prayer, and then we've got one on values, which is just in a storybook form. Then we have, I said, armor of God. The crown is the values. And we've got a little booklet on the fruit of the Spirit, which is not a manual. So it doesn't say do this, do this, do this, sing this song. So in your lesson, let me just quickly say this before I continue. In your lesson, you have to have a few elements. A main focus or a theme. Although the Holy Spirit can mess with that as well, in a good sense, and he can bring another message. So now you've got one hour. You have more than an hour? Mostly some churches only have half an hour with the kids. So I'm not going to divide it in now. So you always have to have a welcome. You have to make the children feel welcome. That's also biblical. Jesus welcomed all the people. And then you have to have, now this following six or seven doesn't have to be in the right order. I have done a lot of essays, so I'll just, then somewhere you have to have the word of God. Somewhere you have to have worship. And somewhere you have to have the application into your world. I don't know who this comes from, but it makes quite sense. But you can do music in Malcolm, music in Word, music in Worship, and music in this. In the Word, you have your Bible verse, but you have in the application a story. When you do the story combined with a Bible verse, it can be done through music, or you can have your worship separate. Welcome can be a game that you play. It can be a, um, a competition. It can be a Q&A. Okay, that's just ideas. I have a lesson that I do. I call it 15 Creative Ways. Just to lift this top of your head a little bit. To say that you can be extremely creative. What I add to this in application, that's very important, I take something home with me. How do I make it stick to the child? Mostly through music, through music in the story, through music at your welcoming game or music. I don't do a lot of games because I do a lot of action songs. That's my anti-game program. <laughs> I hardly have to use games if I do step and step when to the enemy's come and I took back what you could. But you can do games. Children love games. But don't do a whole hour of games. So do this like it for five minutes. You do a Bible story and a Bible verse. Five minutes, ten minutes, story, fifteen minutes or ten to twelve minutes. Worship. That's where the problem is. People just sing two songs in the beginning. But worship is the unwrap to the presence. It's the key that opens the heavens and opens the atmosphere. So worship doesn't have to be here. Worship can start there. You can lead out the welcome even if you put worship there, worship there, worship there. And don't always think you have to sing two songs and stop. If the Holy Spirit is there, and you get another song, sing that third song, and repeat your Bible verse to all the principles through the song. And sometimes, I just take my guitar, I teach, and I sing. And I teach, I don't put down my guitar, I teach, and I sing. And I teach, and I sing. And I teach, and then an hour is gone. Sometimes I teach, sing, teach, sing, sometimes I just sing, 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 and then I put my guitar down and I teach, 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 teach. But in the end, you should, this goes home, and home is actually the heart. So how do I apply, and that's 
Why the children say, I will not need no care for David Leister, I can for Goliath, I can go out. They really go like that when they're great. Just, oh please, can we just not do no work okay? But if we did the application, they will stay in awe. What did that story mean to you today? So Jesus calmed the storm. The disciples were afraid. He said, how could you not believe? How are you so afraid? You've been with me. You know I've got the authority. And then when you've played that whole game on the floor of the one is the wave and the other one is the wind and Klomp van Hulle is his and some of the disciples and Jesus is standing and you're reading from the Bible and they do the dialogue. We call it creative Bible reading. Then in the end you say, okay, now you sit down. When last have you been afraid? What are you afraid of? If Jesus could calm the storm, do you think he can calm your storm? And then, the perfect time to say, draw me closer to you, oh Jesus, take away all the fear. One sentence. Jesus, take away all my fear. I will not ever be afraid because I know you are here. I mean, that's great. One stand. But it works for up to Madrid. Jesus, and then the, the, what, what Bible verse will go with fear? What Bible verse will go? So I'm teaching you to 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Yes, he's not given us God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love. But which, which one comes first? Love, power, and sound, love, power, love, and sound. Power, power love, and a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a son. And if the children are bigger, then you say to them before you start, okay, we're going to have a competition today. You write a song, or a rap, or a dance, or a mime. I've got those. Or you draw a picture of fear, but it must tell the story of 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. And at the end, they know a Bible verse. They know a Bible story. Which story did they teach? Did you teach them now? You teach them, taught them the story in Mark 14, 21. That says Jesus calmed the storm. That's a story about fear. There are many fear stories or anti-fear stories. And now your Bible verse is fear. You've got one or two songs about Jesus' presence. One or two songs about Jesus' love. Because love costs out all fear. God is love. We ever live in love. So that's how you think about your program. And that's how you choose your songs. You can sing for a whole hour. And okay, where are we all now? 15, that's already 30 minutes. Then you worship for at least 15 minutes. And then you send them home for 5 minutes. Apply. And that can be longer. <laughs> Because if a child has pain or a problem, pain, problem, if he needs deliverance, if he needs to be prayed for, if he needs Jesus, if he needs the Holy Spirit, you have to invite. So that word includes, I make an invite, I'm just giving you general Bible children's ministry instruction here. In Matthew, the parable about the wedding, oh no, the feast. We invited all the people for the feast. And those who were invited had all these excuses. I could have fell the throw, I could have stuck on the cup, I could have been stuck on the cup, I could have been stuck on the cup. They had all the excuses. And the owner of the feast got so angry. He said, Those who were invited, they didn't accept my invitation. The smart ones, the grand ones. So he said, go out and collect all of the people that have hardly been invited. This is the first time in the Jews, where the Jews were the Jews, and the Jews were the first time, because they didn't come to the Jews. And then when they all came just before the feast, just to tell you how amazing the story is, he said, they said, but the bride is ready, or the feast is ready, but there is still a place. And you know what Jesus said? Gaan haal die kreppeles, die blindes, die armes en die krankes. 
I don't know what that is in Afrikaans. In English. And force them. Grab them by the hands and force them. So sometimes the glory of God will draw the children, but sometimes they need a little bit of a push. Hey, through grace. You're not going to force them. But sometimes they don't know they're invited. Sometimes they don't know how big a feast it is. So actually I'm now ministering and I have to teach. So we have to be discerners, dis discerning. discerning to know when a child has a need, and especially the most so-called naughty or restless child who takes the most attention and is actually a clown in the class. Sometimes he's got the most hurt. Sometimes he's the child who sits on the roof, who's got the most anger and who needs your touch. And sometimes he just comes because he needs attention. And the only attention he can get is negative attention. Yes, yeah, sit down, yeah, do that. And you can make him a leader. Many times when I go to high school, my children, I, I, the Lord shows me who's the Ramkat, Rampoker, Eitnak, what do you call him? And then I go to that guy and I say, did you know that you're a leader? And then he starts to blush and he says, you've done it on my eight now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I said, you know what, there's a very fine line between leading children to darkness and reading children. God has chosen you to lead children to, dark, to, to light and not to darkness. But I can see God's leadership in you. And for the rest of that hour, it's just like, Shh. it's just awestruck. Mm. Someone saw me for who I really am. So to bless one another, and this is actually a precious moment, is to look one another in the eyes and to recognize the design and to confirm that design through the prophetic that God speaks into you or through just saying something about that person. So as iemand mooi oor het, dan sê jy, jy het mooi blauw oor, hy weet hy blauw oor, hy het het tien keer in die speel gesê, but you see it, that's the natural compliment. But the spiritual blessing is, I see something in you that you just need to hear today. There is a glory about you. There is a crown on your head. You have been chosen for royalty. God has chosen you. He's elected you for many things. So when you look at your children, and even if they're naughty, start blessing them. You can start blessing them through the music. That's why I asked yesterday, but we didn't have trust or confidence yesterday. What's the one word in your heart that you want to sing? Make melody in your heart, sing it. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, you're awesome. Thank you for making this good now. Whatever is in your heart, let, teach the children to into free worship. Just take three words. How great is our God? Look what happened to that song. Look what happened. It, I think it's sung still in the heavenlies like an almost many for seven. Because one man was faithful just to listen to those five words, how great is our God and God give him a melody, a melody on that. So don't be afraid to make melodies. The method, method of teaching the song is, select the song, learn the song of the heart. Say the words in phrases like we did. Say where in the scripture you read it, if it comes from the Bible. Let the children repeat each phrase. Let the children listen to the melody. We're at the bottom of page five. Show the words on cards or the projector or let them watch your mouth. So you don't always need a digital projector. I mean, I, we do six hours a week. We don't use one projector. At the end of half an hour, they know three new songs of the heart. They can sing it because we do the words, our mouths, they can hear it clearly, not too loud, not too many other instruments, and then a little bit of actions or moves with that. Uh, sing the whole song over again. Add simple movements. If you have to add props or instruments, you can. Keep to simple moves. Repeat until they can sing it without any help. When do you know a song? When you know it off by heart. When you don't have to think twice, Make a video of the songs, that's a nice one, and send it to the parents. I know that if you want a new song, I know some of you have recorded one or two songs, but be ready to record one or two or three songs. Um, I'll quickly teach you about the teaching styles of the children, which might influence you, and then after lunch we will do 
the tabernacle. Um, Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5 is the most quoted verse in the Bible. It's repeated over and over and over and over again. Not by men, by Jesus, by the disciples. So that's the gospel in the Old Testament. What does it say? It says there's one God. Verse 4. You should serve God with your shik, shik, shik. Help me. Heart, mind, strength. That's the Old Testament words. What's the New Testament words? Spirit, soul, body. Okay, so it's exactly the same words. Heart, mind, strength. That means everything. So, one God, monotheistic religion. No other gods. That one, remember, the second law? Serve him with everything, and it does not stop there. How do I serve him? How is it possible? Because the law could not save him, I cannot keep all the laws. How many were there? Six, one, three. Six hundred and thirteen. If you add six to one to three, you get ten. The Ten Commandments. And then in the New Testament, it seems like it was too many. Then Jesus said, okay, let's just make it two. One on this hand, and one on this hand. Love the Lord your God, and your neighbor as yourself. So the first commandment says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength. And then the Greeks came and they said, all heart, with your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Anyway, they've got four, but mostly in the Bible it says three. With all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength, you should serve the Lord your God. Are you ready? Now, what does the next verse say? Teach it to your children. Is that what it says? How do you teach it to your children? Telling them, by talking to them. He said, these words which I command you shall be in your heart. How can I serve God if his word is in my heart? That's verse 7, verse 6. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children. You shall talk. So what is the first way of learning for a children? Mommy speaks and child listens. We call it the audio or oral learning. Oral. Are you with me? They teach this to teach it in the class. I didn't know that it comes from the Bible. The first way of learning is to listen. Most of the African nations are oral learners. Children write exams not by reading, but by listening. Stories are told around the campfire, and people remember the story. It's I speak, you listen. So oral is the most important way of learning. He says, talk to it. How do I talk? There you are, my dear. By repeating it. Say how some my sit, stand, lay, gaan. Sit, stand, lie, walk. Sit, stand, lie, walk. Sit, stand, lie. That's what this verse says. Four different positions, three times a day. When you get up in the morning, when you sit around the table, when the children come back from the school, and in the evening before they go to bed. So, different positions, different times, repeat, repeat, repeat. So that's the first. What does verse 8 say? You shall bind them as a sign upon your head and, and upon your forehead. You know what the Jews do? They've got this rolikis with the law. Yeah. You know that they do this. And it's a boxy, it's a black boxy. And they tell it to them on their arm. And they tell them to them. And as you fly together in the air, when you go into the airplane, every how many hours they take that black boxy off. And they take the black boxy off, take the whole turban off, and they pray, pray, pray. When they finish, they put it back again. How? To remember the law of God. Now God says, I've written the law in your hearts. 
But for a child, you first have to touch him, you have to show him, you have to let him experience. So the first one is oral learning, the next one I'll just put my hand here because you have to touch it and feel it. We call it experiential learning. I'll just create the right experience. You have to experience it. That's why we say the wise man built his house stuff so dark he experiences it. He's doing the movements. So the first way of learning is oral learning. You hear it. The next one is experiential learning. You feel it. And the third way of learning, let's see if it's in the Bible. Uh, verse 8 says, You shall bind him as a sign upon your hand, and that shall be as a frontal between your eyes. Verse 9 says, You shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. So now, after they've done oral learning, after they've now done experiential learning, we go for visual learning. Reading and writing is the third way of learning, not the first way of learning. So now we are worried about the words. They must be able to read. But to use a symbol is even more powerful. To use an action is even more powerful. To use the sound of your voice is even more powerful. Do you understand what I say? Okay, so here's the eye. Now say visual learning, and now they can see the words. God is good. God is so good. So now they can read it. So that we use all three of these, and this is called visual learning. I do not speak against PowerPoint, but PowerPoint is not smart. PowerPoint is the lowest form of reading, the lowest form of learning. If you have a short video or a picture on PowerPoint, if the, your PowerPoint had that on, it was efficient. But if you have words, you say, okay, number one, God is the creator. And on your PowerPoint, you write, God is the creator. It's just an insult to the people to tell them they actually can't hear. That's my opinion. Or you just stimulate what you've just seen through visual. But if you wrote a hand and say, God created everything. Which one will you remember best? Will you, re will you, will you remember the word creator? Or will you remember that everything around me is made by the hand of God. It's just the way. So this is a better way of visual learning than only do reading and writing. But I do underwrite that the children have to learn to read, they have to learn to do mathematics, which they don't do. Let's quickly review what were the ways that Jesus taught. We spoke about it yesterday. How did Jesus teach the people? Yes. Did he use any of these? Let's just quickly say. Yes, he did. But let's just quickly write down which were the ways in which Jesus taught the people. Did he take a PowerPoint? And he said, number one, you should love the Lord your God. Yeah? Okay, I love it. She says, Sonia, no. Stories. What stories did he tell? He used his own made stories and they called parables. There was a man, he was a sower. There wasn't a man, man, he made it up. But he sees it every day so he can tell his own story. And he wants to teach something. The next one is real life stories about what he experienced every day and it can also be history stories. Things from the past. You know that the brother Abraham has done that and Moses has done that, but I tell you this is what I say. 
Then scripture. Did Jesus use did Jesus use scripture? How where did he use scripture? How many times? More often than not. What scriptures did he have? He had the law and the prophets. I mean he was the word. Okay. But he quoted a lot of scripture and that was from the law and the prophets. So it was the Old Testament. He couldn't have quoted the New Testament because it wasn't written yet. Okay. So he used the law and the prophets. He said, it is written, written, you shall not. And every time he chased away the enemy by using the scripture. So then I like this one. He used a lot of this. He didn't do Q and A, he just used Q and Q. He asked a question, then he asked another question, then he asked another question on top of that. And I said to him, are you the son of God? He said, first tell me if you believe this and I will tell you from this. He was, he was an amazing redenar. So Jesus taught through these ways and then very experiential, I call it, he showed them that they can see through miracles, signs and wonders. But the miracles he did was actually, so the miracles and the parables, to study those two together, you get all your values, you get all your character, you get all your uh, themes like fear, whatever. And a lot of them is about finances. A lot of them is about stewardship. A lot of them is about the second coming of Jesus. Just go to the, I always revert back to the parables, then I don't have to think out another story. So now I use the life of Jesus, which is a real life story. I, live, I, I use real life stories of people around me when I explain something. I make songs of people and stories around me. I make songs of Bible stories. So I tell the story of uh, or the ravens come and they bring food to Elijah with the application. I use a lot of scripture when I teach, when I sing. sing, I use a lot of questions when I teach. That's at the end of the lesson, you have to apply that. And I use a lot of this by using visible and visual. Symbols, creative things, props. So if you talk about the Bible, you can bring a real Bible. But I do also show them that by the working of the Holy Spirit, by listening to God's voice and by projecting. I don't, I think I left out one, but I don't know which one. Jesus learned, taught through stories, through scripture, through quick questions, and then he showed them. And that's got different. So I see law and the prophets. So just remember, when you prepare your lesson, there must always be a story. Children love stories. Of a tell you a story at your high side. We've got a house mice. He's not here. And house mice tells a story just about every time she's going to fetch house mice. Now we're going to do a mouse Monday on, on video because the children, I think I said, come on, Moni, now. So, in the car, so okay. So there's not so a klein handpop that I gebruik. Now you can't use handpop in all cultures. Some of them have a very negative, some have a very negative. Um, association. So if I use a snake, they will think it's evil. If I use a hyena, if I use an owl, they will think it's evil because they, if I use a spider, they will think it's evil. So I'd rather not go there than try and convince them that God made spiders and eagles and hyenas as well. So I know that evil spirits do live in animals as well. I reckon that is true according to the Bible. But um, I've got a very friendly mouse and his name is House Mouse. They also always have a trouble. Either, and this trouble always reflects what we're going to teach about. So now we teach about Jesus coming again, and you must be ready. So that's not very good. You must full be. You must schön be. And you must be expectant. You must be ready. So that's the signs of the Bride of Christ. Now this poor little, now the parable that I use is a parable in Matthew 25 where it says there were five wise and five foolish. That displays the story of the second coming of Jesus. So we all are virgins waiting for the King to come, 
but some fell asleep. The ones that all fell asleep, and when they woke, some of them didn't have enough oil. You remember the parable? Lovely parable. I just make little lamps. I just cut orange paper with a lamp that looks like a lamp. It's a two-minute pr prop. And there I call five children and another five girls, but to five of them I give another orange beaker, which they can fill their lamps with. So when they wake up, the others don't have anything to fill up, and they can fill up. So he's ready. You must be ready. You must watch and pray. So the three things of the bride, she must be clean. So her whole life is about, there mustn't be a spot or wrinkle on this dress. The other thing, she must be full, full of the Holy Spirit. Hey, that's what the Bible says. Always wear white, let oil on your head, not, let your head not lack anyone. And then watch and pray, watch and pray, because you don't know when he's coming. You must always be ready. Now this little house mouse, he just falls asleep because he was waiting for his grandfather to come and fetch him, who promised him an ice cream, and he waited and he waited, and granddad didn't come, and then almost missed his ice cream, because he fell asleep. And he said, but I've got a story that almost tells the same thing. So I use a real life situation, sometimes a plate, sometimes he's naughty, or his brother steals his tuberculosis, and he gives him a slap, and I've got to teach him not to do that. So invent stories that the children enjoy, and then the question is, when last did that happen to you? Do you sometimes feel angry? Oh yes, I sometimes feel so disappointed. I am so frustrated if this or that happens. Or if that happens, you know, I don't have that much patience. But you know, the story tells. And what do we do? What did Jesus promise? What did we go back to the word or the scripture? Jesus promises. Jesus used the word a lot. He was the word. But unfortunately, and that's a very sad story, the devil, the enemy, also knows scripture very well. So you have to outrun him, outsmart him, outplay him, because you've got the Holy Spirit. And you know what? I've got the miracles, signs, wonders. What's the counterfeit that the devil gives? He gives witchcraft, he gives sorcery. I can't remember what the miracles was. Magic. Magic. Magic, sorcery, and witchcraft. And the children run after those in animation stories. And everybody thinks, it's an animation. It's without any harm. And that's what many of the creators of animation just use to make you believe that it's not. And God said, I've got the real thing. It's miracles, signs and wonders. So we have to go into the supernatural and we have to stimulate them to believe. And if we don't operate in that level, if I can't put my hands on a child and pray for him to be baptized or filled with the Holy Spirit, it's probably because I'm afraid or I don't think it can really happen. If I don't believe, if I want the children to go in worship and to really feel God and experience God, I also have to experience Him first. If I want a child to know the scripture, I have to know the scripture. If I want a child to live, how shall a young man keep his way pure? By keeping Psalm 119 comes, sister. Wherewithal shall a young man keep his way? By keeping it according to your word. I have hidden your word in my that I might not sin against you. Let's just pray, Lord, you're a good God, and we just honor you for all these lessons, we just honor you that you teach us. Lord, I can just give a few ideas, but you are the teacher, and you are the rabbi, and you are the only one that's good. And I really expect in my heart that your word will become alive and that even the ladies who sit here will be able to produce and create their own curriculums, their own plans, their own programs, their own songs and they, they will come alive and say, wow, God has done something in my heart. And I have the confidence and the boldness 
because this weekend I surrendered again by saying I am a chosen generation. I've been selected by God for this task to lead the children to Christ and to disciple them. We thank you and we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.